Welcome to another episode of the reality of building a container house, which is what I'm in right now. We're up here on the third level of our container house. So in this series, we go over important topics such as finding land, permits and engineering, cost comparisons, and more. So be sure to subscribe and follow to join our container build journey on Pacific Pines Ranch. Okay, you guys, first of all, let me apologize for the audio. It is raining today and I'm in the container and I know you can hear the rain in the audio. So sorry about that and just hang with me. We're gonna go over a bunch of stuff today about permits and engineering, which is a pretty big topic when you go to build a container house. So hang in there with me for the audio and let's jump right to it. Woo. All right, so the first topic that we're gonna go over in this video is going to be engineering. So the cost of engineering is gonna depend on several factors. Number one, being the design of the house. The containers themselves are made to sit on four corners, stacked. So once you start to cantilever them or put them perpendicular or vertical or do any crazy stuff like that, it's gonna be more calculations for the engineer to do, which in turn will mean it costs more money. So the more complicated the design is, typically the more it's gonna cost to engineer it. If you plan to engineer something like this, the double E in engineer will stand for extra expensive. Containers are made to function as one unit. Hold on, I have a little example over here. Something that we got off eBay. Look at this, how cool is this? Or even this one. This one is actually what I'm standing in right now. It's exactly this one right here. So anyways, they're made to function as one unit. When you start to cut out the sides or remove any part of the container, that's gonna require reinforcements. So the more that you remove, the more you're gonna have to reinforce, which means the more money it's gonna cost to engineer them for the reinforcements. Pretty much overall, the more calculations the engineer has to do, the more it's gonna cost to do the engineering. The second thing that's going to influence the cost of engineering is the topography of the land that you want to build on. I touched on this in our previous video on the, our first episode of the reality of building a container house, which is about finding land. You can watch that video right here if you're interested. But yeah, anyways, the topography of the land will influence the engineering as well. If you have sloped land, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated to set up the foundation, which in turn will make it a little bit more pricey for the engineer to figure out the foundation. If you have flat land, usually it ends up being cheaper because it's, it's easier to design a foundation for flat land. Also, if you have really sloped land, you are going to likely have to have a topographic survey done for the engineer, so that's another cost to consider as well. Soil is also going to be considered when designing the foundation as well as being in a seismic zone, <laughs> California. And also if you're required to have a geotechnical engineer for your building site, that's also going to increase engineering costs. Okay, and now for the topic that all of you guys have been waiting for, which is permitting, getting permits, costs, and requirements are going to vary greatly between counties. So go to your local building and planning department at the county to find the most accurate info. Some counties do not allow container builds at all. Some only require a septic permit and some have a ton of requirements and restrictions. So they vary a lot between each location. The engineer is going to have to calculate the plans to match the county requirements. Like for example, if the county requires specific requirements for a seismic zone or for snow loads, if you live somewhere where there's a lot of snow, those have to be calculated into the overall plans. 
Some counties require geotechnical surveys to be done on sloped land, and some of them require most and if not all of the work to be done by certified or licensed professionals. Ultimately, all the limitations and requirements are gonna be defined by the local county, so go find them to know all of that information. Some counties are gonna have limitations on the house, such as the size, the location, the setbacks, the design, etc. And also, it helps a lot to know these limitations and requirements before you have your plans drawn. That way, you don't design something that you need to pay to have it be redesigned after that you figure out the <laughs> requirements of the county. So for us, we had to pull building permits from the county and we had limitations that we had to put into our design. We designed the house to fit our piece of land and to match the county requirements. And overall, so far, we've had a great experience with our county. They've been super helpful and we're really, really thankful for that. But I know that's not the case for other people. We've talked to other people building in various parts around the world and some of them it's been extremely difficult for them. So again, it just depends on the county. So each one is different. As always, thanks so much for watching and be sure to subscribe to watch how we built this container house from the ground up. Next video in our series about the reality of building a container house is going to be about the cost of building a container house. So be sure to subscribe and follow so you don't miss it and see you in the next video.